Welcome back. Okay, so we want to think about extrinsic and intrinsic motivation in a different way. And one way to help us think about it is with DC and Y and self-determination theory. And one of the things that they really bring to light is that we are not inherently motivated to be intrinsically motivated for anything. That a lot of what we are intrinsically motivated to do we've learned to be intrinsically motivated. So motivation is something that we learn to be. So let's be clear on what extrinsic and intrinsic motivation is. Extrinsic motivation is when we receive some rewards or receive rewards from behavior from, from others. Um, and then intrinsic motivation is when we receive rewards for behavior from ourselves. We, reward ourselves. We become self-satisfied. But what DC and Ryan is suggesting is that th it's not an either or, but it's a continuum. That on one end is extrinsic and now on the other is intrinsic and in between it's a combination of both. Uh, on this end it's more extrinsic but there's some element of intrinsic motivation but as we move down the line that there's more intrinsic motivation, but there's some element of extrinsic motivation. So let me present it to you this way. So um, here we have that this movement toward extrinsic or be, movement from extrinsic motivation to intrinsic motivation. And we go through these different thought processes. For example, I am doing this because I have to. Maybe for water conservation, I am conserving water because I don't want to be fined. Or I'm going to get a tax break or a reward or rebate if I conserve water. A classroom example is I'm reading this book because um, if I don't, I'm going to get a bad grade. Or if I read, I'm going to get a good grade. So um, I'm, or I'm going to get some kind of reward for reading. So um, there's an extrinsic reward for my behavior. Now moving more with some element of intrinsic motivation is this notion. I feel, I would feel guilty if I didn't do this properly. I would feel shame from my neighbors if I didn't conserve water. They would give me the stink eye if I watered my lawn in the middle of the day, every day. Um, or I would feel guilty if I didn't read this book. I would feel my like I'm letting my teacher down or my parents down. Um, or my teacher makes me feel really good and feel proud of myself when I do read. Um, um, so the, there's an element of emotion, of, of feeling good, that looks more like intrinsic motivation. The third step, where it begins to look more like intrinsic than extrinsic, is this notion. I think it's important to do this because when I conserve water, I am more like the water conservationist. I'm going to be more like these people who have the cool lawns or I'm going to be more like these people who are respected by the community. Um, or I'm, if I read this book, a classroom example is, if I read this book, then I'm considered one of those bright kids or I am uh, considered, you know, a, a good student. Um, so there's some intrinsic motivation as well as extrinsic motivation. So it's, you know, this value of, of being considered a good student, there's that social construction out there. There's people saying this is what it is and that is imposing a, um, a, a reason to be this way. Then the last one, which is very much very close to being intrinsically motivated and less like extrinsic is, I'm doing this because I think it's really important to me to do this. I'm really conserving water because I, I really value 
and I think it's important to do it because we need to protect the water. We need to make sure that there's enough water to drink for following generations. Or I really think it's important to read so that I can learn and uh, that helps me get into college later or it helps me get good grades or it helps me understand this material better. So there's some real logical reasons for why or there's utility in being able to do this or for engaging in this behavior. Um, so those are the reasons why I would want to do it. And then of course being truly intrinsically motivated is to really enjoy it to be self-satisfied with it. So DC and Ryan define it in this way. So here are the psychological terms for that movement from extrinsic to intrinsic motivation. First, you go through external regulation where there are rewards or punishment for your behaviors, getting something or having something taken away. Introjected regulation is where it has some emotional component to it. Are you going to feel pride is there, or is there shame associated with it? Is there fear associated with it? And then there's identified regulation. Do you get to be considered like certain other people? The values that certain people have, do you want to become like those people um, is identified regulation. And then integrated regulation is that those values and those beliefs, those reasons to engage in those behavior become ones that you adopt. You think that those are important. You see how useful it could be either to yourself or to your community. And then lastly, intrinsic motivation is just pure pleasure. It actually just makes you feel good about yourself or feel good. There's something about it. Um, I personally believe that there is very few people, there are very few reasons or things that we do that is truly intrinsically motivating. I think a lot of the things that we do were somewhere along this continuum, whether it be work or even pleasure, like um, going to the beach. It's probably because we see the utility of it, as well as there's some emotion to it. So how can we use DC and Ryan's notion to help students learn to be intrinsically motivated? Well, that's going to be the subject or focus of the next screencast. So stay tuned.